uh, my name is Veronica Ofinge, I have not said before, and I come from the Universitat Autonoma of Barcelona, and I will be sharing the session today. And it is my pleasure to introduce you as Professor Stefano Pirandola from uh, University of York, that he will... Uh... Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, so can you, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Oh. It's better if you put that there. Okay, so, uh, so let's, okay, so this is, uh, yeah, uh, three lectures on quantum cybersecurity, and uh, after me there will be Ibrahim talking about, I mean, other two lectures talking about uh, uh, experimental, uh, uh, um, uh, applications. Now, uh, when I start fighting with this, I got the red at the best solution, probably. So I can't can hear. Sorry for my voice. I'm a bit a bit cold. So, uh, so I, I uh, uploaded this uh, document on the uh, website of the school, and it's quite. Comp I mean, it's uh, actually the first part. Uh, actually, not. Just, I mean, it's the first part and other parts of this review that you may find on, on the archive with a uh, bunch of other people. Uh, it's called Advances in Quantum Cryptography. Now, this is just one to take. I mean, this document is just I mean, a, a, a collection of three uh, uh, excerpts, three parts from this uh, review. I wanted to, to pick uh, three main themes. Uh, first of all, the, uh, well, the basics of uh, quantum key distribution, the so-called uh, uh, discrete variable protocols, like bb 4 uh, in particular, which is the most important, of course. And I want to give you some uh, idea of why this is used, I mean, why this works, what type of security uh, you have, how you prove security, uh, I mean, easily, somehow, for, in terms of very, uh, I mean, against very wide, very general attacks. And then, okay, we'll move uh, to uh, the so-called continuous variable uh, uh, quantum key distribution which is a, a more advanced formulation where you have like a more, uh, uh, the possibility to have like a more, uh, um, well, uh, the, the possibility to have higher rates, generally speaking, and also in terms of uh, application, it might be uh, a cheaper implementation than standard uh, discrete variable uh, quantum key distribution. And then at the end, the third hour, if you survive, and I survive, we look at our secret key capacities. Uh, so some very recent result on basically what are the ultimate limits in uh, private communications. So what is the best uh, rate you can achieve uh, in uh, uh, private, uh, private quantum communications. But OK, uh, so, uh, so I'm not going through all the details of this document. I'm going to use mainly the, the, uh, the blackboard, not the whiteboard, the blackboard, likely. And so I'm going to pick some, uh, uh, I mean, some of the most important topics here in this document. Uh, so first of all, I want to ask, want to, like to ask you, what is your knowledge on, uh, in terms of, uh, well, quantum information and continuous variable quantum information? So what about quantum information? You already know, more or less, the basics, right? Raise your hands. Okay. So that's a good part of the audience. And what about continuous variable quantum information or quantum optics? Okay. Well, yes. So not bad. Okay. So uh, so let me start with the. Uh, some give you. I mean, of course, there are other other uh, lectures about this, but uh, about uh, continuous variable quantum information, and I guess also there has been something about uh, this key variable quantum information. So, but let, let me give you like a very basic, uh, uh, very very basic. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, elements. So, okay, so let's start by talking about uh, uh, well, qubits, okay? So, uh, because I mean, that's very important for, uh, I mean, when I say, I say this key variable protocols, basically I mean, I mean that we are using systems that have uh, this, uh, basically a finite dimensional Hebrew space. So the degrees of freedom are very simple. It could be like a spin, okay, we just, uh, a bidimensional Hebrew space or a QDIT, d-dimensional Hebrew space, so D levels. 
in continuous variable is, is somehow is uh, uh, considering continuous, okay, degrees of freedom. So infinite dimensional uh, Hilbert spaces. So in that case, we are looking at stuff like, uh, uh, well, the, the electric field, so the value of the electric field or the components of the electric field. We okay, can take like a, uh, I mean, the so-called quadratures of the electric field, the electric field. They have like this kind of uh, continuous uh, 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 spectra or eigenvalues. So in that case, you have much more, uh, much larger uh, uh, Hilbert space, of course, infinite, an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Okay, but let's talk about qubits. Okay, so of course, what we are talking about, I mean, the, the first, uh, uh, thing to know is about that when I have a, 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 like a qubit, okay, let's say a pure state, right? I mean, I can, okay, I can define a computational basis, okay, just zero, one, okay, and then I can always write that, okay, something like this. So that's an arbitrary pure state, so an arbitrary a pure state of a qubit, so you can write something like, okay. Like this. Okay, so now what is this representation? So uh, it's basically, uh, you have a corresponding uh, geometric picture, which is the block sphere, okay? So you have like this, uh, uh, well, not Giotto, but okay, there's this kind of black, uh, block sphere. So that's the equator. Okay, so the part of the equator. So at the North Pole, basically you have uh, zero, right? The South Pole, you have uh, one. So cat zero and cat one. So that's the origin, right? And then you consider, okay, uh, you consider this guy here is the, the polar angle, okay? So you get a polar angle here. And also, Okay, you have to consider like uh, that you may have like here, projecting here, okay, you may have like uh, uh, another angle, okay, along the equator if you want. Say there. So you have basically the, the, the uh, so the, the basically the azimuth, okay, azimuthal angle here. So you see here already here, so that, okay, so if, if theta is equal to zero, uh, so basically cosine here is, is, is basically, um, 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 we're just, just kicking up basically, the, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's cosine is one, and the sine here, uh, this, uh, here there's an half, okay, it's just conventional, okay? You can, you can also write without a half, but I mean, that, that's the best way to represent this. Uh, so uh, that's basically, uh, it is uh, one, and you get the, uh, that the North Pole, if theta is equal to uh, pi, you go the other way around, and you get the other cat, one. And when you have like uh, uh, theta, which is, so if you got theta equal to zero, you got that state, and uh, when this is pi, you got that state. Now this is the computational basis, okay? Which is of course also called the, uh, the Z basis, right? Because these are the, the eigenvalues of uh, basically this operator here, which is the Z Pauli operator, okay? Or sigma, I mean there are several conventions, Z, sigma Z, whatever. Okay, but now, okay, what's happening if I consider the equator, right? So the equator, I have like here, what is called like the plus, right? And here I got the minus. Now, these are uh, given by, so uh, it's like you take theta equal to uh, pi half, so you got like uh, there. And then you have two choices. You take phi equal to zero, or phi equal to, to pi, right? So you get there, or you go to like there. So now I'm basically going along the equator, and here you get plus, and you get minus, right? And these are the eigenvalues, sorry, the eigenstate, the eigenstate of <coughs> basically the x uh, 
Pauli Pareto. Okay? And then you can, make, you can make other choices, like, uh, uh, for instance, you may, uh, uh, well, you may consider this situation where you are here and here. Okay? So this is also sometimes called uh, the plus i and minus, minus i, right? And so basically, this is achieved when you got uh, the phase, which is pi, I mean, this azimuth, which is pi half, or three half pi, okay? And then you got this and this, right? And these are basically the eigenvalue, the eigenstate of the y operators, which, which is this, this Pauli here. Okay, now, uh, so this actually, so why am I telling you about this? Because, I mean, of course, I mean, these are really the, the very basic, uh, um, the, the very basic information you need to know. Okay, so what, what, is, the, uh, what is the deal here? The deal here is that, okay, uh, uh, each of this, so that's my Z basis, that's my uh, uh, X basis, okay, coming from uh, this operator there, right? This is uh, my Y basis there, okay? So these bases are known to be uh, mutually unbiased. So, um, what does it mean, mutually unbiased basis? Okay, it's like uh, this. So mutually unbiased uh, basis. Okay, so mutually unbiased basis uh, basically means that, okay, uh, if I give you like uh, 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 one of the two uh, eigenstates, okay, in one of the, those bases, and I try to measure it using a, a different basis, okay? So if I pick, for instance, I don't know, uh, uh, let's say uh, plus, okay? So plus is about also, of course, can also be written like this, right? Okay, so my, that's my plus, is this, this, uh, this uh, state here, okay? So for instance, if I pick this plus, from the basis, which is x, okay? It's one of the two. And then I try to measure this in the z basis, okay? And remember, the z basis is the computational basis here, right? Okay? So what I get, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's easy to see, no? That, uh, I mean, if I compute this, right? That's equal to this, which is equal to one half, okay? So what's going on? What's going on is that if I pick away that, that state from one basis and I use the other, another basis, another uh, of these bases, the Pauli basis, because they are mutually unbiased, it means that I'm getting a completely random uh, output, okay? So, so if I use this basis, I get, I get zero with probability one half, and I got one with probability one half. And this is actually the property of all these bases, okay? So whenever you pick one, from, uh, if I get, if I, get uh, I mean, if I pick a minus, it would be the same. Uh, uh, if I pick also, I mean, uh, use the zero one, and I use the x basis to measure, that would be exactly the same. <coughs> well, that's a very important observation, because it's really at the basis of uh, <coughs> why BBIT4 is, is, is working. Um, So that, that is, this, is, this is to keep in mind, okay? So if you have like a, a, a basis, uh, so the against state of one basis, and if, if I pick the wrong basis, so somehow if I pick X, I have like a completely, completely random output. Of course, I mean, if I pick Z, I'm fine, because I mean, if I pick Z and I get, uh, or if I, I mean, if I pick the same basis, so if I, if I prepare, uh, if I have this and I measure this in the X basis, then it's fine. Can I get, a, I have a deterministic output. Okay, so that's important to remember. So mutual and biased basis. These are, what, these are used in BBIT4, I'm going to explain in a little bit. The other notion which is very important is no cloning, okay? So no cloning is really, I mean, a very simple consequence of the linearity of quantum mechanics. 
okay? Because one say, okay, uh, suppose I have like uh, an input which is from the Z basis, okay? So I get uh, uh, zero and one, okay? From the Z basis. Then I suppose I can actually consider a machine which clones perfectly, okay, uh, these states. So it creates something like this. Okay, so my input is one of the two eigenstates, and at the output are two copies. Why I want to do that? Because, okay, I'm an EVS dropper, I'm on a channel, and I'm getting some state. I want to create two copies. I want to send one copy to the, the legitimate user. I want to keep one copy for me, because I want to withdraw the information. Okay, so suppose this, is, this, this can be done, okay? But now the question is that, okay, uh, can I actually, can I actually uh, do the same for this? So if I pick uh, now a state from the X basis, from, which is a, a mutually unbiased with respect to the other one, can I do this? So can I clone like this? <coughs> well, I mean, it's clearly no, you can't, okay? So what you, you, can, you, can, you can see, because you have this, right? So uh, when you cannot do this, right? Because it's easy, no, you, you just exploit the, uh, uh, well, this, uh, I mean, the standard expression for the plus uh, uh, eigenstate, so you get, and, and then what you get, right? So because you have this transformation by linearity, no, you go into something like this, right? Okay, but this is actually, I mean, just compact notation for, for this, okay? So that's the rule you establish for the Z basis, okay? So you apply the fact that, I mean, this is like a, a quantum mechanics is linear, so you need to apply that to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to those uh, eigenstates, so this is going to be cloned, this is going to be cloned, okay? Then you sum up them. I mean, you, you consider this kind of tensor product here individually for each of these terms. And of course, this is different from, from this, okay? Because that, that would be like something like, uh, <coughs> okay, one half, and then you get all the, no? You got all these pieces. That's different. Okay, so that's important. Of course, it's very fundamental in quantum cryptography because you want to use that. In fact, uh, what is the, the most, I mean, the simplest way to use a mutual unbiased, uh, uh, mutual unbiased basis and, and no cloning is before even, uh, uh, I mean, not historically, but conceptually, even before VB84, uh, the simplest, QKT protocol is basically uh, the so-called B92. So it was uh, uh, proposed by Bennett in 92 as, and it's today probably the, the simplest protocol. So what you want to, to have, you want to, want, want to achieve, you want to achieve basically, you want to use two non-orthogonal states, okay? So as long as I'm using something which is not zero and one, okay, but something like say zero and, and plus, okay, then <coughs> I kind of, uh, I mean, I'm kind of using two uh, mutual based bases, and I'm kind of uh, relying on the no cloning theorem, okay? So in DB92 protocol, it's not something like this. So you basically you, you pick like a zero and plus. So you have like a bit, so as I said, there's a sender called Alice, and Alice is uh, encoding zero, the bit zero into that state, and the bit value one into that state, okay? So that's my encoding, classical encoding, right? And then there's the channel, okay? Here this Bob, who wants to uh, basically uh, detect these states and retrieve a zero one, okay? Now the problem is that here in the middle, there is Eve, this is dropper, 
trying to uh, attack these states, right? Now, we know that <coughs> because of the no cloning, so if you use like a so-called quantum cloning machine, the quantum cloning machine has a limited, uh, it's a kind of it's a limited power in the sense that if, if this quantum cloning machine is working very well for zero, okay, so if, if the quantum cloning machine is perfectly cloning zero, well, is is really bad in cloning class, and vice versa. So because of this non-orthogonality between these two states, that actual attack is, is now uh, not perfect, okay? And the dropper only sometimes is able to get the input from Alice, okay? Okay, I'm not going to talk more about this BNN 92 but that's just the, the idea is that it is the simplest, pro the, simple, the simplest protocol basically exploiting, which exploits the fact, okay, that the input signals, the two input states are non-orthogonal, okay? So if you want, they belong, in particular, they are uh, between two, two mutual and biased bases, okay? Because of this, this is not working perfectly, and you can achieve, uh, okay, security, and you can achieve uh, some kind of uh, uh, security threshold, and so on. Mm. Now, this was just, just wanted to tell you about some basics idea, okay, behind this, QKD, this quantum cryptography uh, uh, model and in general behind QKD protocols. Now, let's, let's, let, let's look at BB84 in detail, okay, where these concepts, especially this, and the use of these two bases is fundamental. Okay, <clears throat> now, BB84, Start with a description of the protocol, right? And I don't know if I can use actually my slides. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. So that's the that is actually uh, um, right. So you see here, this is how. Uh, PPT4 basically is working. So it's a very, 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 very uh, condensed uh, uh, way. So you have Alice on one side, and Alice, she wants basically to encode a bit of information, okay? Zero or one, exactly as in B92, okay? So she wants to send this bit to, to Bob in a private way. But, okay, what does, she, what does she, I mean, she just doesn't use the, uh, the Z basis. I mean, if, you, if she, she was using just the Z basis, right, this means that she was going to encode zero into that state and one into that state, okay? And if it only does that, we know this is not secure because, I mean, if she sends this to, I mean, you can actually perfectly clone the input. So if you can get a perfect copy, okay, and completely understand the input, right? So what she does is she randomly switches between the two bases, okay? So, okay, 50, 50, I mean, 50 percent of the times, she, um, she does this, okay? The other 50 percent, she does the, uh, she uses the other basis, the X basis, okay? So let's say that the first operation she, she does is just she randomly pick a number between 0 and 1, okay? And then after that, she does a second random operation. Okay, let's encode this number, this bit value, say zero, into either the Z basis or the X basis. So if, he chooses, if, if she chooses the Z basis, then zero go into that cat zero. If she chooses the X basis, zero goes into the plus, uh, 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 the plus state, okay? So this, this extra layer of randomness, the switch between the two bases, which is clearly fundamental, okay? Because now the same bit, zero, that goes uh, in through the channel could be potentially encoded into non-orthogonal states, okay? And if his dropper doesn't know what, somehow, what type of cloning she has to do. Do I clone the Z basis or I clone the, the X basis or, okay, she doesn't know, okay? And because of this, she cannot perfectly call or clone the input. Well, so that's the basic trick, 
But now what's going on for Bob? Of course, Bob needs to be in the conditions to uh, understand okay, what was the input. So at the end of the, of the communication channel here, there is Bob. Right? Now Bob needs to, to decode the input, uh, uh, the, input, the input bit. Okay, now Bob knows that Alice has been randomly switching between Z and X, right? But it doesn't know, no? We, uh, for in each instance, and I suppose that basically this is a protocol of like many rounds, okay? So Alice is sending like a lot of signals. And each time she's switching uh, between bases. So Bob doesn't know what, what bases were used. Uh, he has to basically switch randomly between X and Z, okay? So what's going on? So suppose that Alice has been using the Z basis, okay? Now, if Bob is using the, the Z basis as well, right? He is, he's able to perfectly retrieve the, uh, the input, okay? Because it's going to measure uh, in the current basis, and so it's going to get zero and one perfectly, okay? Without any errors. But if Bob has been using the, uh, for that instance, uh, Bob used the X basis, then it gets uh, completely random. Uh, for, so for instance, from, from zero, it can get here plus or minus. So the one of the two eigen, eigen state of the basis. I mean, with 50%, something like this, okay? Or the same, if one is coming here and he use the X basis, again, he has a random output, okay? So the same, when the, the basis is X, and if Bob is using the X basis, so the corresponding basis, so X, with respect to x, so it's going to get plus, it's going to detect plus perfectly, so to the code zero, which is basically the, the label, if you want, and it's going to detect minus perfectly, so it's going to, to the code one uh, again. Now again, I mean, if he instead he was using the z basis, uh, and for instance, if he, if he receives plus, here he would get zero, one, zero, one, randomly. Okay, so what they have to do then to eliminate these instances, the idea is that, okay, uh, so there's this kind of randomness, okay, uh, going on. So the idea is that, okay, uh, what about if at the end of the protocol, okay, Alice use a kind of public channel, okay, classical channel, like, it's like a telephone or internet or whatever, which is somehow not, uh, I mean, which is robust, it's, like a, it's kind of, uh, I mean, something that, the, of course, the, the use dropper cannot, alt, uh, cannot tamper with. So a classical channel, not, not uh, a communication channel. Or oh, when I talk about a communication channel in practice, I mean, this, this communication, for instance, could be, sorry, I didn't mention this, but basically this communication could be like a, a, a Q, uh, I mean, a, a polarization qubit, so it could be like a photon with some polarization, like, a, and different polarization could be like a vertical, horizontal for zero and one and diagonal and so on. So you have, you have perfect mapping between these ideas and corresponding photonic implementations. Uh, this channel could be like a fiber, an optical fiber with some noise, okay? And you have to assume that the worst case scenario, that noise is due to an image dropper. And Bob here is at the end, is applying some detection. It could be like, a, uh, well, a, a photon detection generally, or I mean, it's just clicking using like some kind of interferometer and trying to uh, polarize the splitter. So he can use like optical, uh, linear optics in general to, to, to understand, to make his decoding. So to implement the, the measurements into the Z or X basis. So all this is an optical implementation clearly. Um, so what's going on here is that, okay, so they do this kind of uh, uh, process, and at the end they say, okay, now let's reconciliate the basis. So this is a very important step in, in a protocol like this. And it's also, it's also called sifting, okay? So Alice is using a, another channel now, a classical channel, not the fiber, a classical channel, okay? Like a telephone or whatever, to say, hey, look, Bob, I am using, for this instance, the Z basis. I'm using, for this other instance, the X basis, and so on. And now the, uh, Bob uh, say, okay, reply, okay, in this instance, I got the correct one. In this other instance, I got, uh, I used the, uh, the incorrect one. So they can understand, uh, run by run, if they were using the same basis or different basis. So this means that they can basically, uh, 
they need to throw away half of the, of the communication rounds where the bases were different. So ZX or XZ. And they're keeping half of the instances where they were basically using the same, X, X, Z, Z, okay? So this means that they have like, a, so this means that they have basically uh, perfected the coding. So Bob is perfected the coding in half of the cases, is perfected the coding the, uh, um, the input. Okay, now you may imagine, okay, look, but this is actually, this kind of random switching, right, could be done by this drop as well, right? So the dropper, instead of using a, a quantum cloning machine, right, you could use, okay, let's apply, actually one of the most basic attacks, which is called intercept resend. So let's apply the same, the same idea, right? So here, um, uh, uh, use this one. No, not the B92, it's, no, it's B84. Okay. So, B84. Uh, so probably it's better to use the, the white. Right. Okay, so remember, so there's Alice here, uh, bit zero 01. Okay? That's important. That's classical information to be shared. Now, 50% of the time, she picked Z, she picked Z, that basis, and the 50% of the time, okay, she picked that basis. <laughs> okay? So this is random speech. Right. Now, this, go, this goes to the channel, right? <laughs> and now, as I told you, you know, there are two chances. Okay, Bob is using Z. Okay, that's fine. Is using X, well, no. A discard resistance. Now here, you choose Z, well, no. You use X, that's fine. And if they do this like this, this kind of uh, uh, decoding, Bob is doing this decoding, then it's fine. Now what about if in the middle, there is dropper, no? Does exactly the same, okay? So she could actually measure the input, uh, the input system in Z or X, no, randomly. So basically, she can apply the same decoding process of Bob. Of, of course, I mean, if she does that, uh, uh, well, there are two issues. Okay, first of all, because of the no cloning, no, so she, she introduced a lot of noise in the, in the communication line. And we quantify now exactly what is this noise. Uh, for that, in second, second observation, if she does that, she actually gets more information than Bob, okay? So basically, she is actually replacing Bob in the middle of the line, and then she's sending basically a lot of garbage back to Bob. So actually, this intercept resend attack is a very strong attack in the sense that Eve is actually uh, getting all the information, more than Bob, okay? Now we see more, more, more precisely about that. <coughs> But the, the, the catch, I mean, the other point is that it's very noisy. So, uh, and Alice and Bob, they have the chance to measure the noise on, on, on the communication line. And if the noise is at that level, okay, so it's quite high, so they say, okay, that's too noisy. So probably Eve is doing interceptor send, and we have to discard, I mean, to abort the protocol, right? So there's this, pro, this, 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 this important point to understand in QKD. Uh, in quantum cryptography, it's not that the noise in the channel, I mean, it's, that, it's not that there is, a, there is no, there is the presence or, or absence of, of uh, an Ives dropper on the line. The Ives dropper is, uh, is always assumed to be on the line. But it is important to quantify, okay, how much the Ives dropper is getting as a function of the noise, the disturbance that is introducing on the line. If that, that disturbance, that noise is too high, it means that the, the attack is quite, well, quite strong, too, too, uh, too strong, too noisy, and it's, it's, uh, the protocol is aborted. It's a kind of denial service, okay? So what we see, you see that this is like a threshold. I see, after some noise, I can proceed with the protocol. Above that noise, I can't. 
And if I'm below that noise, I can uh, apply some procedure to, to derive a key. But above that noise, no, I can just add to, to abort. So, uh, I think I have a table about this interceptor sand, which is quite uh, uh, um, right. So basically, that's this. Uh, okay, let me let me better put this. This is what's going on with the scepter sand. Um, well, let's just take a look first at the at the, at the first at the first at the first idea. Okay, so remember. Okay, so Alice and Bob are going to to throw away here the wrong basis. Okay, so in the sifting. At the end of the protocol, they agree what instances to keep. So, they get, so Bob is, uh, is only getting to, so you, go, you only get Z and Z, and you have like uh, X and X, okay? And this is thrown away. So after sifting, the situation is that L is Z, Bob Z, or L is X, uh, Bob X. So for instance, this is the situation here. So suppose like, okay, so after sifting, you have this, this situation here. So Alice was using Z and Bob applies corrected Z, okay? Now remember, if there's no noise on the channel, everything is perfect. So Bob is, go is going to get zero, one, okay? So it is no problem. But if this Eve doing an interceptor send, that's, I mean, this is now the issue. So Bob, if, uh, in, in each of these sifted, instance where they are picking the same basis, of course, if it doesn't know beforehand if they were using ZZ or XX, okay? So this is kind of randomly, I mean, this is agreed at the end. So when she was using, when she was attacking the line, she could only switch between the two. And so 50% of the time in this ZZ instance, he has been using the Z correct basis or the other 50%, the X basis. Well, when she has that's using the Z basis, so she's okay, projecting like the, eigen, the input eigenstate, okay, uh, uh, when the color basis, so she's using no noise. So if she gets zero, she gets zero. If the input is one, she gets one. So there's no noise. These are eigenstates of the Z power operator. And then she has the output from this measurement and the state are not perturbed at all. And the same state are sent to Bob. Bob applied, I mean, Bob in the case was applying Z, so Bob achieves zero, 01. And in all this process, there's no noise. But also in all this process, Eve is getting all the information from Alice. Now, in this other situation, Bob, uh, Eve is using the X basis. Okay, now she's making the wrong choice, and what's happening is that for any input, let's say it's zero, uh, X give you randomly plus or minus, okay? So it's, it's this idea here, apply for, okay, the other basis if you want. So one is she gets one of the input and apply X, so one is projected onto plus or minus with the same probability. So the information is completely randomized. Right? So she really doesn't know how, I mean, she has a random input. And she realized that after, I mean, they, they declare now the basis that, okay, I, in this case, I use the X. So what I got is just a completely random number. It's not related to, I mean, it's related 50% of the time is correct, 50% of the time is not correct. And then it's the same, when she, she, she release one of these states to Bob, so suppose, suppose like, okay, she measure, uh, plus and plus is sent to Bob, but now Bob is using Z here, and again is getting, a, because he's, he's, me he's measuring uh, plus in the Z basis, is going to get again here, I mean, 50% of the time uh, uh, one value, 50% uh, the other, so it's completely random, okay? So these question marks here now comes from the fact that it was a misdropper, okay? And, and so it's, the dropper causes noise, right? Here. And this is like this kind of uh, uh, important point. Now, similarly, 
for the other x instances, so when, Bob, when Alice and Bob were using the x basis, it's the same. If the is dropper is using the same basis, so he has perfect uh, uh, information and no noise, but if the is dropper is using the other basis, then he has, she has a randomized output, and she's sending a lot of uh, somehow garbage to Bob because Bob is going to now uh, getting stuff which is in the Z basis and is measuring this stuff into the X basis. So again, is, is Bob is going to get a random output. So, yes? Both cases, doesn't know which basis. Uh, she doesn't, no. She just randomly switching. She has, because it's, it's done before any classical communication uh, between Alice and Bob. So Bob, Alice, the advantage somehow between, uh, of Alice and Bob with respect to Alice is in the agreement of the basis. Because, I mean, they do, uh, I mean, Bob is switching, Eve is switching. Okay? Also, also Alice is switching. So everybody, everybody is switching this here. But at the end, it's Alice and Bob picking the correct basis. So sifting. And so when they agree that, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's done basically a posteriori at the very end. So when they agree that, they, they just drop and say, okay, for those instances, I mean, she was, she was using X or Z, X or Z. Of course, if Alice was, was going to agree with the drop, it would be different, but I mean, that's, that would be another case. <coughs> so uh, the idea is that, okay, Wow, okay. Um, is that clear? I'm too fast or too simple? I don't know. Question. Yes, it's not to if. Yeah, it's. it's yes, yeah, she, she, knows, she knows about the classical communication, the, the public channel. Okay, which is the public classical communication channel, is used to, uh, for somehow, somehow at this level, this point, is used by Alice and Bob to agree the basis, so to reveal the basis. Of course, I mean, the dropper uh, is, is hearing that. The dropper uh, <coughs> also gets this, she, she gets this information. And she knows when Alice and Bob were using Z and when Alice and Bob were using X. The point where I was saying is that even if she knows this information, this information is only available at the very end. After uh, basically all the interactions, all the interactions that Davis Dropper was using in each channel. So somehow she was, I mean, during the, the protocol, she was using random, randomly switching between the bases. She, she could, I mean, she didn't have this information. This information is, is, is basically given at the very end. And they agree, the same basis. And she somehow, oh, I'm, I'm out of the, I mean, she basically, she, for each, uh, 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 say, agreement of the basis, she still have, like, a randomness, just because, I mean, she was, like, uh, left out of the, the game somehow, right? But she knows when it's ZZ and XX, ZZ, and she also knows that information afterwards, because the, the, the public communication channel is used by Alice and Bob also for other, other things that I'm going to explain. Okay, now, uh, okay, so, uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, ah, okay, probably I should run a little bit, okay. Okay, now, so here it's important to, uh, two very important point, okay, now, um, uh, so, uh, the first observation is about, okay, let's, 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 let's see about noise. Okay, how to quantify noise. So, now, um, so that's the picture of, okay, let me, just, let me just look at one basis because it's actually symmetric, okay? Just this basis for. Uh, okay, but just look at this basis. Okay, now, uh, now it's important to introduce, okay, suppose that this is going on, this attack, okay, which is the, the most basic, the, one of the most important as well.
Uh, probably I can also erase this. Okay, now we have to, um, as I was saying, okay, that's that's pretty a powerful attack because so that's well, it's called now intercept resend. Okay, now there are some 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 point here to understand. First of all, like, when we talk about noise of the attack. This is quantified by a quantity which is called Q bar, okay? Which is quantum bit error rate. It's a quantum bit error rate. So this is the first point to understand. So what is the quantum bit error rate? Okay, so Alice and Bob have this noise. I say this is like this noisy channel we leave in the middle, right? And remember, there's also like this kind of classical communication channel, and it's only this, okay, where they can actually uh, communicate like with the phone or whatever. Now, the point is that they are doing this process, so they are like, a, so like there's like this quantum army that are like, uh, say, uh, n rounds and uses of the channel, of the quantum channel. Well, n is, is typically very large, so it means that the Alice is doing that. This encoding n times, when n is typically is quite large, and Bob is doing this decoding n times. Okay. Now we know that using the classical communication channel, I mean they are actually can uh, <coughs> do this shifting. Okay. So basically they throw up. I mean basically they just select n uh, n over two, so half of the instances. Uh, uh, basically, after uh, sifting, no. So they use this to say, okay, you're using this. This is so. Let's let's pick x x z z. So after the times, they are fine. They pick those instances. Now, if is assumed to be on the line, how to quantify the the noise? First of all, how to uh, to understand, basically, what, how to estimate the noise in the first place. So what they have to do, actually, uh, after this process, so you can imagine that they have like a, a number of, I mean, locally, they have, an, uh, they have basically very large, very long strings, okay? So let's say Alice, so they have Alice as basically n minus, at, uh, I mean, n is over two uh, uh, bits, like, uh, I don't know, something like this, and Bob has corresponding uh, bits uh, like this. Okay, just for example, at the first and so on. And n over two. Okay, now, these two strings, in the absence of noise, will be identical, okay? And it's what is called the shifted key, okay? Now, the problem is that this, this seems to be, because there is if, there is noise, and you may have like uh, uh, that when Eve is picking the when Eve is picking the wrong basis, is interfering with the process and, and basically is like creating like a bit flip. There, for instance, or there, and so on, right? And this comes from the fact of let's see the random switching that Eve is doing. So she's in introducing. Errors, okay, in this in this uh, in these keys in these strings, right? So how to do that? So what we have to do? Um, so they need to quantify the rate of this error in these strings, okay? So what do you mean quantify? Given an input bit in the shifted key, okay, what is the probability that the corresponding output bit is wrong, okay? So somehow it's like, okay, what is the probability that given, given one, you got zero, probability of given one, uh, so given one, you get zero, probability of given zero, get one. Something like this, no? So something like this, probability of error, so you got probability of zero times, no? Uh, 
plus, so that, that would be the average error probability, uh, the, the average, no, error probability. <coughs> okay, so with some probability one half, Alice is picking the value zero, but there is some chance there is a bit flip. Okay, so probability one half, Alice pick the value one, there's a corresponding uh, probability there's a bit flip. Now, the process is completely symmetric, this is what is known as you know, binary symmetric channel. Okay, so remember, binary symmetric channel is uh, very clear, I mean, it's the basic uh, no, channel in, in information theory, where, so suppose that is like the, the encoding, right? And this is like the decoding. So you get some probability, uh, you get something like this, where this cross probability is, is basically P, right? And one minus P. So there's a probability of bit flip which is equal to P, okay? So basically, we say that this is actually equal to P, equal to P, and that's equal to P, right? So this guy is actually equal to, to bit flip, okay? So you have, you have a bit flip probability. Now, this bit flip probability applied to the sifted the strings is the Q-bar, what is called the Q-bar. Where is that? There, okay? Right. So is the probability of error. Now, uh, when, you look at the, uh, when you look at this process here, right, roughly you can understand how is this, how large is this probability of error, okay? Um, so let, let's, let's take a look. So of course, uh, when you have, for instance, when you have like, uh, when you are in this situation here, there is no error, okay? When you are here, I mean, we can look at this basis, it'll be the same for the other basis. When you are here, what does it mean this? So this basically, basically it's a random output. It means that Bob is getting zero or one with the same probability. So 50% of the time, it gets zero, which is fine. 50% of the time here, it gets one, which is wrong, okay? So, what's happening? It's happening that here is always perfect in the decoding. Here, half of the time is wrong. So the probability of error is 25%, right? You think about that. So given Alice is encoding zero, okay? Here, uh, it's perfectly decoded. Here, it's going to get zero 50% of the time, one 50% of the time. I consider that it is a random switching, which is one half between the two bases, okay? You have, you have basically you have four possible outputs here. I mean, three times of these, three, three of these outputs are fine, so it gets zero, 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 and then a one. Do you agree with, do you agree with this? It's 25% DQ bar. Is that clear? Is that? Sorry, uh, okay. Okay. So remember, this basically it's uh, one half of the time you are here, one half of the time you are here, okay? Now, given the one half of the time that you are there, one half of the time, the output is zero is correct. So one half times one half is one quarter, 25%. So, and this is the same for the same base, for, the, for both bases. So for bb 4 we intercept the sand, the Q bar is 25%, okay? So there is like a one quarter of the times, there's a bit flip in the data. Now how they can actually quantify this? Well, uh, the trick is that, uh, I mean, they need to know this. They need to know this quantity. Because that's a lot of noise, okay? Uh, so how do they can do that? So they, basically they are going to pick random subsets, okay, of their local data, okay? And I'm going to, I mean, they agree, they agree that. They say, they say okay, uh, let's reveal, okay, to everyone a random subset. Okay, say the first instance, the second instance, and so on. So, for instance, they're going to, uh, to say, okay, let's declare that one, that one, and it's a random subset. So, they pick also probably that one. They don't know if it's different, that one, uh, that one, 
Uh, okay, that one, <laughs> that one, that one, that one. So they're going to reveal part of their data. Of course, when they reveal this part of the data, this part of the data is no longer uh, usable for a key. Okay? So, but this data is now uh, compared on the public channel. So let's say that uh, they use M instances for what is called the parameterist dimension. For the parameter estimation. Okay? So for instance, they get, okay, they get 0, 0, they get, okay, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And they, I mean, they compare this on the channel, using this classical channel. They say, okay, I got 0, you got 0. Oh, I get 1, I got 0. Oh, it's an error. And then they, ch they count, okay, how many errors I have? At this rate, asymptotically, because I mean, this, you have to understand, this, are very, this n is very quite large, so somehow this frequency gives you the probability of error, okay? And then they can understand, oh, okay, we are wrong 25% of the time. And they say, okay, so the QBAR is 25%. That's now is known to them. Okay, so when they do this, they are left with n over 2 minus m bits, which are still, I mean, which are, I mean, all the ones which are remaining, you know? So the ones which are, which are not revealed, okay? And this could be a quite large number, actually, because for the parameter estimation, this m doesn't need, doesn't need to be so, so big, okay? Well, n is quite big. So this procedure of predatory estimation is not actually going to affect what is the asymptotic uh, performance of the protocol. It has an effect in so-called finite size, finite size performance, but asymptotically it's fine, right? And, okay, um, now potentially they may use these uh, remaining bits for, uh, as a key or to do something, to do other stuff, like error correction, uh, I'll, be told about that. I'll be tell you about that in a, in a bit. But for this specific protocol, 25% uh, is too much, okay? And, and then they say, okay, uh, we just abort the protocol, because 25% is comparable to an interceptor send. And when there is this interceptor send uh, uh, attack, okay, uh, basically, if is getting uh, uh, more information than, than, than Bob, just because if, if is kind of in, uh, applying the same decoding as Bob in the line, when it does the same decoding, she gets the same information, uh, and if, when she, I mean, uh, she, she gets at least the same information, and when she is doing the wrong decoding, she is basically destroying the information, and that information is also destroyed for Bob. So, some, so Abe is getting at least the same information about Bob. So 25% is too high, and they have to abort the protocol. Okay? Um, so, uh, well, do you want to take a break? Or, yeah? Okay, let's, let's have a break. <laughs> let's see you in, I don't know, 15 minutes. Thanks. <laughs>